Today we're going to talk about uh, virtual machines and um, going through the installation process for Ubuntu. And um, the current workshop is actually adapted from um, Julius's one that we've run for around, I think, like two years now, um, from 2019. And yeah, let's get into it. So uh, first, we'll just start off with a brief introduction and we'll talk about um, Linux and virtual machines. Then we'll move on to the install fest talk about um, some useful additions that we can have to our virtual machine and uh, go over some nifty tricks with the VM and then we'll just uh, conclude from there. So just a bit about NUS hackers. Um, you can go to this link here, uh, which uh, where, where we post more details about the programs that we have. Um, if you want to join core team, how to join our events and yeah, other miscellaneous things there. So we hold Hacker School, uh, Friday Hacks, Hack and Roll, and Hacker Tools. Um, during the semester itself, we organize Hacker School for uh, learning hacking as a beginner. So things that we teach are things like web development, Android development, um, developing Telegram bots, and so on. So these are meant to be beginner friendly. Uh, and it happens every Saturday. Yeah. Then we also have Friday Hacks. So this happens every Friday evening, where we invite uh, speakers from academia, industry, and so on to talk about various interesting uh, hacking topics. Uh, so I think this semester, we are partnering with a couple of professors. So uh, we have one that's coming up uh, this Friday, which will be pretty interesting. And so definitely do join. Yeah. Then we also have Hack and Roll. So Hack and Roll happens uh, during semester two uh, at the start of it. And this is a two-day hackathon where you actually get to build anything you want and have a chance to win prizes and freebies. And so lastly is Hacker Tools, which, uh, yeah, lastly is Hacker Tools, which uh, is this current uh, series of workshops where we go over common tools that hackers use, uh, yeah, for their day-to-day -day work or, or just hacking in general. So uh, make sure that you have the prerequisites uh, installed already. Um, yeah, this were, I think the exact instructions for this were included in the email which was sent out to um, uh, people who signed up. And you can find the link to download both of this also uh, on the Facebook event page or Telegram channel. Yeah, so um, before I continue on, feel free to ask questions in the chat or unmute yourself if uh if, yeah if you have any questions uh yeah so um i guess this term might be new to people who are uh who, who haven't really i guess gone into hacking before so uh when we say hacker we're actually referring to someone who strives to solve problems in elegant and ingenious ways so the hack here refers to hack as in hackathon where you build things rather than try to break things by like uh uh, what you call it, hacking into systems, right? So there's a different kind of hacking. Uh, yeah, so we are more focused on the building aspects of things. And if you are curious to know more, uh, visit this link. Um, yeah, to see uh, our, I guess, our, our mission as NUS hackers. Right? So these are some examples of famous hackers. Yeah, so um, the Hacker 2 series is actually inspired by MIT C sales missing semester of your CS education. And this is available at the link here as well. Uh, so this is originally called uh, Hacker Tools, right? And uh, so uh, the idea behind this series of workshops is that you will learn to make the most of the tools that hackers have been using for decades. And so uh, we want to help you to learn how to make the most of the tools that productive programmers use. Um, yeah, so brief introduction first on uh, Linux and Unix. So what is Linux? Uh, Linux is a Unix-like operating system kernel. So these are the most, uh, this is the most popular uh, kernel in the world. And so Android, Chromebooks, most routers and servers, as well as supercomputers use um, Unix kernels. Oh, sorry, Linux, Linux kernels, yeah. And so uh, a kernel is actually like the most fundamental part of the operating system. So you have your applications and other software that's running uh, on the user level, and then you have the hardware itself, right? 
And so the kernel serves the purpose of um, the interface between these two components. Uh, feel free to let me know during my um, sharing whether it's too fast or too slow, or if you have any questions. So uh, what is Unix? Unix is a family of multitasking, multi-user operating systems, and it was first released in 1973. In contrast, uh, the first uh, popular multi-user Windows was actually Windows 2000. So that was quite, uh, quite a while later. So some examples of um, Unix systems are Mac OS, iOS, Sun OS, BSD, yeah, and so on. So these are the most popular family of operating systems in the world. And so you can see like by the statistics, um, yeah, this is actually true. Most of us, a lot of us are using Android phones. Yeah. So why should you use Linux? So most development tools are actually designed for Unix-like systems. So the development experience is much better. Right. And as computing students, uh, because you know, we are involved with um, developing software and developing related tools, sooner or later you will end up developing for uh, on, or on a Unix-like platform. So examples of modules that you will take if you are in NUS are like uh, networks or info retrieval, which require you to SSH inside a Unix-like system. Yeah. Also, most technology companies use it. So it is definitely a practical and useful skill. So we are also using virtual machines rather than doing a native install. So what exactly is a virtual machine and why exactly are we using it? So a virtual machine is actually a simulated computer. You can think of it like, um, so if you played Game Boy um, games, right? Uh, uh, in the modern, in current times, if you play a Game Boy game, Usually you will install an emulator and you'll run a Game Boy ROM on it, right? So similarly, a virtual machine is a simulated computer. And you can configure a guest virtual machine with some operating system and configuration without affecting the host environment, right? So it's isolated from your, um, your, actually, your actual native OS, whatever you're using, maybe Windows or Mac OS is isolated from that, right? So this allows you to experiment with operating systems, software, and configurations without risk. Like you don't have to worry about um, your partition drives being deleted or something, right? So it also allows you to run certain software that only uh, runs in a certain operating system. For example, uh, if you're using a Windows system, uh, one way to do it may not be the best way, but one way to run Linux software is to run it to virtual box, which we'll be using later. Yeah, and we also want to use a VM to experiment with like malicious software so that it doesn't end up you know, corrupting our uh, native system. So uh, yeah, so these are uh, the main features that are useful for our VM. So isolation is what we've roughly talked about where we, you know, we want to isolate the gas from the host so you can use VMs to run buggy or untrusted software uh, in a safe manner. Right. And another thing that uh, VMs uh, usually offer are snapshots. So this allows you to capture your machine state and you can then make changes to your machine uh, and restore it to an earlier state uh, if needed. So um, that's something to note as well. So VMs are actually slower than running on bare metal itself. Right. So your native uh, OS, whatever you're using, probably can run software much faster than if you were to run it on a VM. Also, another thing is that it competes with, uh, resource, for resources with your whole host OS. So this means that uh, you shouldn't run, you, you probably can't, uh, or at least on a personal laptop, you probably can't run uh, multiple VM instances uh, if you don't have a lot of RAM, right? So, and your other software might uh, slow down as well take a, and take a performance hit. Yeah. So you also may be unsuitable for certain applications like games or high performance computing because yeah, they are generally slow. So some examples of um, VMs uh, that are being used like um, in industry or yeah. And so today, this is the one we are using, the virtual box. Uh, 
uh, uh, software. So this will allow us to set up uh, Ubuntu VM. Yeah. So now we're moving on to the setting up phase. So um, you saw software. Uh, you don't have to pay any use for not just using command line interfaces. Um, okay, let me know if you are, if you still face any delays in audio. It's okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Anyway, let me know in the chat. Thanks. Oh, it's there for the computer audio. Uh, just like you, sure. Is it lagging still? Oh, it's good already? Okay, thanks. Okay, I think it should be okay now. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, so let's continue on to uh, the actual practical itself. Yep. Okay, so uh, let's open up virtual box. So I'm going to give everyone some time to get their virtual box uh, instance up. So maybe until around six, uh, sorry, 650. Uh, yeah. And if you have any troubles, let me know. Just open up the virtual box. Um, what do you call it? Application. Anyone facing any difficulty so far? Or if you need a bit more time, let me know as well. Okay, let's continue on. Um, okay, so we will now create a new virtual machine. So first click on new. And we can just call our Ubuntu instance uh, Ubuntu itself. Uh, so here, the next step is to select the amount of RAM that we need. Uh, generally, Ubuntu, I think it requires a minimum of 512 megabytes, but it recommends around two gigabytes and we'll use that amount as well uh, so that uh, the installation phase later won't take too long. Um, yeah, but in general, do not exceed like one out of four of your physical RAM available or you'll see like your system start to slow down. So we'll be using two gigs of RAM. And the next step is to uh, 
load in a virtual hard disk as well. So we'll just create one on the spot. And for this, we'll be using a virtual box disk image. Um, yeah, so just the default option. And we will then choose a dynamically sized um, hard drive so that we only take up the amount of space that we need and not more. So next, uh, Ubuntu actually has a minimum of 10 gig and recommends 25 gig for storage. And so uh, the minimum installation requires around six gigs. So um, we'll just play it safe, I guess. And uh, we'll just use 20 gig for this installation phase. So we have extra allowances. Yeah. So once that is done, you can click create. So is everyone okay so far? Okay, continuing on. Um, let me know if there are any problems or you need me to backtrack uh, along the way. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we have the things set up now. Um, the next thing we need to do is to actually load in the CD. So to do that, we'll navigate to settings. And we'll select storage. And from there, uh, there is a CD icon that you can see here, which is where you know we'll be inserting your disk like you know, uh, virtually. So after clicking on it you will see this um, field that opens up and we'll want to select the this icon here. So remember earlier during the prerequisite stage, um, uh, we mentioned that uh, to install, uh, what do you call it? The Ubuntu ISO, this image. So this will be what we are using to install the Ubuntu um, operating system itself. So choose the disk file. So for me, it's inside my downloads. So I'll give everyone some time to find their this image. Okay, so let's continue on. So we select the, this image itself, um, open it, and just press okay. So now that we've configured that, we are done with the virtual box setup. setup. Right, so now we can actually start the machine itself. So we'll press start. And press start again. And so you should see this being loaded up. Um, I'll give everyone some time again to uh, for the machines to start up. So maybe around uh, two minutes or three minutes, yeah. So we have to wait until uh, 6.58. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, also let me know.
also let me know if my audio starts to lag again. Um, I think I'll give a bit more time in case people are um, taking a while for the soil screen to load. So let's just extend that to seven. And in the meantime, if anyone wants to take a break to go uh, drink water to the restroom, yeah. So we'll just we'll resume again at uh, seven. Actually, let's, let's have a bit more time. I think seven, three minutes is a bit, is a bit short. Um, let's resume at uh, 702. If you have any questions in the meantime, so feel free to ask. You can, you can PM me in the chat if you are shy as well.
Okay, so let's continue on with the installation. Um, so next, you click install Ubuntu. And uh, so at this point, we'll just be uh, selecting the English keyboard layout. Continue on. Okay, uh, we want to use the minimal installation here. So that you know it takes a faster time because we're just trying to see how to install. But um, I guess if you don't want as much bloat, you also will choose the minimal installation and just install whatever else you need. Yep, the slides will actually be shared later on. Uh, I actually can just share the link to the slide in the chat so that you can take a look at them. Um, give me a second. Okay, let me stop the screen share. Okay, actually I'll share it uh, during the installation phase because the installation phase will take quite a while. So let me let me get the installation phase uh, up first. Then I'll take the time to go and find the link. So uh, we also want to uh, remove the download updates while installing Ubuntu. So just the minimal installation. After this, we click continue. Okay, and we'll hit this page which tells us uh, uh, which lets us erase the disk and install Ubuntu. So don't have to worry of about, about this. So you are not erasing your native computer's disk. You are erasing the disk of the virtual machine. So remember earlier we allocated um, 20 gig of storage. So that's um, the thing that we are erasing. So you can click install now. And continue by just using the default options. Okay, we can select Singapore or whichever country you're based in. And we just enter in our particulars. So, Okay, yeah, so now we are installing it. It will take a while. So I'm going to take this time to find the link and answer any questions if there are. Okay, let's continue on. Um, so at this point, we will need to remove the CD that you know, we virtually have put into the virtual machine. So on the top left-hand corner, there's a option for machine. And uh, click on the settings for the settings of your virtual mach machine instance. And there, we go over to the same um, tab, which is the storage tab, and we check to see if the disk is still inserted. Uh, okay, so it should. Okay, so if, if this shows empty, means your disk has been um, dismounted. So once that is verified, you can just press enter to continue on um, running our newly installed uh, Ubuntu system. So now you'll take a while to start up. And the next thing we'll be doing is to take a look at guest additions. So 
Um, DMs actually provide some software for better in integration. So sometimes, you know, you need to work between your computer as well as your VM instance, right? So some things that you commonly need will be um, to share the clipboard between uh, your VM instance. Uh, if you're running some software there and you want to copy some text over, uh, screen auto resizing and um, so on. So these are known as uh, guest additions. And you can actually install them. So let's log in first. And um, okay, let's take this takes a while. Yeah, once once we have logged in, we'll open up a terminal in order to uh, install the guest additions. Okay, so now we've logged in into Ubuntu successfully. Uh, we want to open up the terminal. So here we have a bash shell. And we can basically type in um, certain commands uh, for us to set up the, um, to, to set up and install the guest utils. So we can just follow the commands listed. Type in your password. Um, update the package repository. So what is a package repository? Similar to how you install things from maybe the app store. Um, similarly, in uh, Ubuntu, you have a package store as well. That you can up, uh, you can, which you can pull packages from. So you want to update that to make sure you have the latest um, uh, you have the latest uh, version of it. And now we'll install the packages that we care about, the guest utils. So, okay. We'll take a while to download all this. And um, something else to note while it's installing is that uh, if you are installing Windows or some other operating system, in this case, we are installing Ubuntu, right? But if there's some other operating system that um, we do not have guest additions in a package repository. So in this case, we have it in the um, Ubuntu's, in Ubuntu's uh, package repository, specifically in APT. Right. Uh, if we don't have it, uh, what we can do is we can install it via this image. So if you click devices and um, you click insert uh, guest edition CD image, this will allow us to install it if we have it locally or also to download the this image. Okay, so um, moving on to the next part. So sometimes you actually may need to run unstable software on the VM, right? So you can always uh, force shutdown your machine. Um, I think there's a shutdown button here, right? Yeah, you can always close your machine and you can, is there any other power, power button? Yeah, I think it's here. So I'm not going to close it now. Uh, but yeah, you can probably shut it down and then you can always bring it up again. Uh, yeah. And so another thing you might want to do is also to save uh, the state of your virtual machine before um, so that you can you know resume it later on. And so 
can try it by pressing close and see the options available and you can save the machine state. That's one of them. Right, so you can try this out. And uh, snapshotting is actually basically like capturing the state of your VM at a particular time. So you can you know, resume it later on. And this is useful like for experimenting with different software. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, so you can take the time to explore this um, after the workshop itself. And you can also save the snapshots. Yeah. And to restore um, all these snapshots, you shut down, you can shut down your VM and then you can select the snapshot that you want to resume and resume it from here. Also, there are some things, other things you can do with your VM that will won't be advisable if you if it was a native system. So this uh you can try don't try this out on your native system, try this out in the virtual machine instance. Uh I'm not going to spoil what it does, but yeah, uh you can see the uh, effects of it. So that brings us to the last part. Um so okay, this is uh Sorry, so for the conclusion, concluding remarks, um, yeah, just try to install, you can install other, um, what do you call it, uh, operating systems other than Ubuntu. There's Arc, there's uh, Fedora, um, Manjaro, and many other operating systems that you can try out. And you can just choose whichever one um, suits your needs. Yeah, so, uh, yeah. So definitely just, just try out whatever that was mentioned in the slides. You can try snapshotting as well. Um, try to bring the, the different parameters that we use when we're setting up your virtual box instances. And yeah, feel free to send any questions my way uh, when, you, when you've done so. Um, yeah, so for next week, uh, next week's hacker tools, right? Uh, because we'll be um, doing command line uh, scripting, sorry, command line and shell scripting, uh, there are a few alternatives that you can use apart from a virtual machine. So this is one of the things you can use uh, as part of the workshop, but you can also install WSL. I think there's WSL tool now. Uh, and uh, for Mac OS, you can just simply um, run your terminal application. And if you are using Linux, I think you should know uh, how, how things work really. So yeah. Um, yeah, so if there's, uh, please do leave feedback for us via this link here, um, things that you like, dislike. Um, and also there'll be a next, there'll be hacker tools as well next week. So this will be taught by Hao Wei, one of our more senior 40 members, and it will be covering shell and scripting. So this will be on Wednesday instead of Tuesday, and it will be slightly later at 7 p.m. Because we've realized that 6.30 is kind of an odd timing. Um, yeah, just let us know if there's any like feedback like if you prefer other timings and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see how we can proceed from there. Uh, if not, that's all. And just, yeah, let me know if there's any questions. So I'll, I'll hang around for a while. Let me also send the link in the chat. Uh, hi, can I ask like, yep. what could I key in when you ask for like sudo password for an MI name? Oh, just the, the password. Inside, uh, which I don't need to type anything like I press the keyboard, none of the keys I like, enter anything. Oh, yeah, it's high hidden, right? So you don't want uh to display your password, so it's like grayed out, but actually, it's key in already. Oh, but the cursor also doesn't move, eh? yeah, yeah, it doesn't move. So, yeah, it, it will still register, but it's not, yeah, they won't show like because if the cursor moves, uh, you'll be able to tell how many characters they are, right? Right, right. yeah. So, so the password is the same as the one I used to like log into this thing, right? Yep, correct. That's correct. Yep. All right, thank you. You can just press and hold back, backspace first to like to clear your input whatever you use. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Yep. Uh see who else has a question. Um Robin has a question. VMware workstation. Oh, I haven't tried this before. <laughs> I, I've only used virtual box. Um but I guess it could be a viable alternative. So I'm pretty sure it will allow you to run um, uh, what do you call it, other these images as well. Yeah. 
yeah. Uh, I mean, you can try it out and let me know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, if you don't want to, oh, sorry, what? Make this image. Um, you mean like the ISO file to use Mac on the VM instead? Uh, I, I'm not sure whether, okay. I'm not sure whether you can find a Mac this image. I, I, I'm not sure, you know, if it's proprietary. I haven't tried myself before. I so far I've only tried like Linux. Um, yeah. Oh, there is one. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you want to use a Mac, like, why why not just use a, why just not just use a Linux system, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can use that too. Yeah. Um. Or yeah, I mean, uh, if you want a Mac, probably get a, go with a native version as well. I'm not too sure how performant it is if you are running through a VM. Yeah. And it, I think most servers probably use like Ubuntu or like Debian, some Debian based like OS. Yeah. yeah. Or something more lightweight, I guess. So for next, work, next week workshop, if you don't want to install a whole virtual box um, instance of Ubuntu, you can just use WSL. As, as we covered earlier. Uh, and or, or this, if you're on OS X, just use the terminal app. Yeah. I think I think that WSL2 is now pretty okay. I have personally haven't used it, but I think WSL2 is from what I've heard is like serves the purposes that, that you will need. 